<laughs> it was second grade. We were singing our favorite song at the top of our lungs, and we were pretty sure we had the lyrics right. <laughs> Jack, get back. Get me off of the crap. <laughs> Everyone else was playing Boys Chase Girls, but unless you're a Beth Watterson or a boy, Boys Chase Girls could have been called Chase Yourself. <laughs> so we settled on Monkey Bar Tag. Now, I know that playing tag on a solid steel set of monkey bars seems too safe to be fun, <clears throat> but these weren't your mother's friendly monkey bars. Imagine if a regular set of monkey bars had a love child with Mad Max's Thunderdome. <laughs> it was basically a six foot tall bear trap. <laughs> but we knew we could handle it. We were kids. We were invincible. We were Christian scientists. <laughs> <laughs> if you aren't familiar with Christian science, don't get confused by the second part of its name. <laughs> Just like military intelligence isn't intelligent, <laughs> Christian scientists don't believe in the entire physical world. <laughs> and are most famous for not using medicine or science. <laughs> I grew up in the world's only Christian science college because my father was its biology professor. So, in their opinion, he was teaching fiction. <laughs> Dad said it got awkward sometimes, but they kept him around because they wanted the college to be accredited. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, at the Toddler Dome. It was a chilly Wednesday afternoon when I tried to dodge that tag from Kyla Crandall's sticky hand and face planted into cold, hard steel monkey bar pipe. The entire playground cringed when they heard the smack, just like they did when that guy bounced off the hole in Titanic. <laughs> I hunched in the sand watching blood splats dapple my brand new outfit. The worst part wasn't the pain or being tagged it or the ruined Oshkosh Bagosh plaid overalls. <laughs> the worst part was the shock that maybe sin, disease, and death were real. <laughs> I know. <laughs> pretty deep for a second grader, huh? See, up till that point, I'd been pretty certain that sin, disease, and death were just a figment of the feeble consciousness of mankind. <laughs> drip, drip. My blood puddled in the sand while across the playground, I could hear Beth Watterson being chased. <laughs> Hussy horse skank. <laughs> the cool thing about Christian science is that it was founded by a lady. Woo! In 1879. Woo! Woo! <laughs> That was 33 years before women could vote and 34 because before they could own property when their husband was sick. <laughs> that doesn't get a woo. <clears throat> <laughs> the uncool thing about Christian science is that it says anytime you're sick, it's because you're thinking incorrect thoughts. <laughs> so if you get sick, it's your fault and you feel guilty for it. <laughs> oh, and you can't take medicine so you die faster. That's another bad thing about Christian science. <laughs> Now, I know that prayer healing sounds crazy, but think about it this way, okay? In 1879, vaccines for tetanus, diphtheria, and rabies had not been invented yet, nor had aspirin, and they didn't know the, about the existence of blood types, vitamins, insulin, or penicillin. So, <laughs> at that point, modern medicine and prayer probably had pretty competitive success rates. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> At one point, Christian science was actually so widespread that Mark Twain thought it was an enormous threat to the country. He uh, was so worried about it that he wrote a whole book about it. Today, there are barely enough Christian scientists to write a whole sit-and-spin essay about it. <laughs> <laughs> when I was born, there was no doctor there. My father and a Christian science nurse delivered me. Christian science nurses are just like regular nurses with no medical training. <laughs> <laughs> my parents were Christian scientists because both my grandmas were. My two separate doctors told Grandy B that she could never have children, so she got a third opinion from God. <laughs> and then she had seven. <laughs> my grandpa used to tag that story with, gosh darn it, Billy, you prayed too hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'd always believed in Christian science and never had a reason to question it. Just like I always believe it would hurt to stab my eyes out with salad tongs. <laughs> never tested it, 
I think it's true. <sighs> uh, but when my face became a blood geyser on the playground, my faith got a pop quiz. After the clang, the playground monitor swooped in to take me to the bathroom for cleanup. But before I went in, they covered all the mirrors in long strips of, long strips of brown paper towels, because they believed that if I saw my nose smashed on the side of the, my face, I would believe in my imperfection and believe it was real and freak out, and they were fucking right. <laughs> we spent the next hour reading the Bible and the signs and health and reaffirming my perfection. And I'll tell you what, it worked. An hour later, when my mom picked me up, I felt no pain, and my nose looked totally normal in her rearview mirror. And the next day, I returned to school with no swelling, no black eyes, no lumps. Believe what you will, but I knew I'd had my very own healing. Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> or a secular what, what? <laughs> I was so proud to be a Christian scientist, and I would have stayed that way forever if three things hadn't happened. <laughs> Number one, you can become an official member of the church when you're 12. So I turned 12 as fast as I could and applied on my birthday. A week later, I, sta I sat waiting for my approval interview at the head of a long boardroom table in the Sunday school. Looking back, it was probably just three or four small tables pushed together, and my fear must have sealed the seams. Maybe my, my nerves also made me feel towered over and stared at with disapproval by the elders of my church. Or maybe I was 12 and there were nine of them and they were real big jerks. <laughs> I knew I was answering wrong, but I couldn't help it. When they asked, what can you do to support the church? Underneath their words, I heard, prove it, prove your worth, prove that you were good enough for God, little sinner, that you didn't poke a hole in the elders' waterbed on purpose with a pin. I fumbled and went with, um, pray and think of thoughts and donate my allowance. They decided that I was not spiritually mature enough and that I should study hard and pray hard and reapply in six months. That whatever was wrong with my soul would perhaps be fixed by then. They might not have said that last part, but I totally heard it. <laughs> Number two, the year after my mom and I, uh, the year after that, my mom and I got in a car wreck. I wasn't hurt, but my mom saw them coming and assumed that twisted mom seatbelt position when the impact crunched her spine. Oh. She suffered from debilitating migraines that kept her out of teaching kindergarten for a year. After months of trying to deal with it through prayer, she secretly turned to doctors, but the guilt racked her. We lived in a world where goiters were treated with turtlenecks. <laughs> <laughs> And the sick and dying were treated like a dirty secret, not talked to or about, and definitely not visited with soup. <laughs> being a Christian scientist is like the opposite of being Jewish. <laughs> Mom's health eventually improved, but I'll bet you five bucks Mrs. Barron is still rocking that goiter. <laughs> Number three, after that, my mom's friend went into a coma one day. He was in fifth grade. Coma. His panicked mother took him to the hospital and they told him he had diabetes. In every official piece of literature I've read, Christian science claims that choosing to abstain from medical treatment is a personal choice and that the church will not punish you whatever you choose. But when he tried to bring insulin to school, they kicked him out. That was the last straw. My brother and I started going to public school and mom said she didn't care where we went to church as long as we went. So more often than not, I went to St. Francis because my Catholic friend didn't have a curfew and communion wine takes the edge off a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a Christian scientist anymore, but I do believe some of the things I learned from it. Number one, brown paper towels will always remind me that if you don't dwell on sickness or negativity, you drain them of their power. And because I am a perfect person, I never, ever, ever dwell on the negative. <laughs> but unlike second grade me, I now believe that sin, disease, and death are real. And if we ignore them and pretend that they aren't, we won't get to learn all the important things they're here to teach us. Like how fun sin makes college. <laughs> and I also learned that when I'm sick, it's not my fault unless there was tequila involved. <laughs> or salad tongs. Everybody cut 